In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we're going to use the IK controls, some tricks with the viewport point snapping, and the Vellum Solver to create this scene where the octopus grabs onto this balloon. Basic concept number 3B, ring posing workflow. For the next posing exercise, I'm going to try and get this octopus in a position where he's trying to grab this ball. And later on, we're going to turn this ball into a vellum balloon and simulate all the wrinkles when this octopus is pressing on and putting pressure onto the balloon with the tentacles. The setup up here, this is the setup that I've been using for the basic concepts numbers one through three so far. And or as what is a little bit different is this sphere down here, which will be the balloon. So this is mainly here for now for the posing part will be for reference because we need to know where the sphere is now to make life a little bit simpler i'm gonna scatter some thoughts all over this sphere and then we're gonna use this point snapping in order to get our ik tentacles in the right position this will make our lives so much easier for posing so let's take a look what we have first let's put the render flag on this joint deform node so we can see what we're doing then we're going to modify this rig pose let's see what we've got so all the tentacles are moving this time i have the head anchored down so all the tentacles are free to move. This way it will make lives, our lives, a lot easier. Okay, let me reset this. Now let's go back to this sphere. I'm gonna scatter some points all over the sphere. There is a time shift just because this transform node is actually an animation. And this I will explain later on when we set up the vellum solver. But there is a very simple animation which just moves the sphere up the, to help the vellum simulation get in position. This time shift moves the timeline forward. The time shift node will freeze the keyframed animation at the end of the balloon's animation on frame 13. So we can rig the octopus grabbing onto the balloon. We're going to template this time shift node. That will allow us to see all the dots that are scattered on the sphere. Then we're going to put the render flag on the joint deform node. Lastly, we're going to select the rig pose node. And that's what we're going to be modifying. Come over here. Activate the rig pose node. Next, we're going to grab these tentacles. The IK controls for the tentacles. Move them around. Now, they're not snapping yet. So we have to actually turn on the point snapping. And we can do that by uh, pressing this button on the toolbar over here. Point snapping. Now, we should be able to snap very easily. Now, you can see that. If you find if the point snapping isn't working, right click the point snapping icon and double check if the templates option is enabled. Now that snaps right to the surface of the sphere very, very easily. I'm posing the octopus in a position like he's trying to grab onto the balloon with all his tentacles. This can be easily done since all the tentacles are now just snapping onto the surface of the sphere thanks to the point snapping. Hover your mouse over the uh, 3D viewport over here. And then on the keyboard, press Control B. Make the viewport full screen. Well. It, it will occupy the entire panel area, which is the middle part of Houdini. You can also hide these toolbars here, but this makes it easier to pose, having the viewport a little larger. On the keyboard, press Control 2. This will split your screen into two views. That way we can have one as like a camera view. The view on the right can be like our workspace so we can do our ringing process. Let me put the camera actually put, uh, create a new camera for this angle. You can see I've experimented quite a bit with this. Hide all that. Uh, let me do this. Okay. Come back here. Next, we're going to feed this into a vellum simulation. Let me get that camera back. This is going to be a very simple vellum simulation setup. So all these, these black notes are here for reference. So I'm going to move this over. I'm going to drop down a vellum configure balloon. Okay, now I'm gonna hook up the vellum solver. Okay, let's move everything over to the left, actually. Now the octopus, this is gonna act as our collision geometry for the vellum simulation. So we're gonna have to hook this up to the third input for the vellum cloth is actually the collision geometry. So the balloon's gonna collide with the octopus. So let's just give this a run. D let's see, let's just run this and see how it looks like, okay? Not what we expected. I wanted it to inflate. And another thing is that the balloon actually needs a few frames to prep up. And that's why I have this animation here. 
So this is an animation. The keyframed animation will help the villain simulation push the balloon upwards onto the octopus. It's touching the top surface of the sphere, even with the animation. So the balloon has to begin in a position that is not overlapping with the collision geometry, not over overlapping with the octopus. It has to be in a good state to begin with. Otherwise, the vellum simulation will not work. It'll get confused. So I'm on the first keyframe and I am I just need to lower the height. So it's already negative 0 0.4 uh, Houdini units. Let's go a little bit lower. Let's start off here, negative six. Now you can see that it's already highlighted in green. That's because I already have a keyframe on this. So let's see, let's take a look. Okay, that looks clear. Like it doesn't look like it's um, overlapping with the sphere to begin with. And then it'll sl animation will slowly bring the sphere up so that it presses against the octopus. Okay, let's run it through the Vellum Solver. Okay, that's not working at all, it, but it is telling us a very good information that it's overlapping with one of the tentacles. So this is frame one. Now let's go a little lower. Let's make this. Okay, let's just move it down. Try this out. Okay, so the balloon just falls right down. We've fixed our overlapping issues. We don't have any more points that are overlapping. But we need something to push the balloon upwards so it follows this animation. We need to use this animation. In this vellum cloth node, pin to animation section. Now we're gonna pin parts of the balloon, not the all of it. Because once you if you pin all of the points on the balloon, the vellum solver will start to lose some of the vellum balloon properties, and we're gonna have a hard time inflating it a little later. So I wanna just click this and I want to bring up the lasso. I'm also going to turn on only point visibility, this button here. So this will allow me to only select the points that are visible. So I don't select the, the points on the top. I only want to select the points on the bottom surface of the balloon. Okay, let's try that. And then press enter. So you can see our points being selected in here. Now for the pin type, I want a soft pin because I want the vellum solver to take over for some of the points. I want the vellum solver to create those wrinkles for me and decide for me where to put the wrinkles on the balloon. And I also want to match the animation because we want to use the animation, the keyframe animation that we, we already have. So let's try this. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We're getting that balloon feel and we're getting that push up, but it looks like it's falling backwards. I think we need more points to pin down. So let's come back over to that vellum cloth. Let's pin a few more points down. Okay, let's run this again. That's pushing it on all sides. So this gets us really close. Now this might be good enough for you. Let's throw down a vellum post process node to smooth it in out and get a higher resolution. Now let's merge the octopus in with the balloon. Let's see how this looks like. Okay, let's bring in our camera angle. Uh, I might want to change the camera angle a bit though. And if you leave the vellum solver on this frame over here, so we've left the vellum solver on uh, frame 23, watch what happens when I go back and tweak the tentacles using the ring pose node. It is a little slower, so you can see it lagging, but you can also see the Vellum Solver updating. Now, this is not going to be the final thing, though, because this is working on cache. You can see this is orange now. So once you re-simulate it again, it, it will be a little bit different. So this can be awesome for real-time posing. Only thing is we need to turn our template points back on. Then come back here and we have to turn this back on. So I'm gonna turn the time shift template points on, put the point snapping back on as well. Okay, now we can really, oh, that'd be cool. I wonder if it actually makes that wrinkle. I'm going to re-simulate this. Now I think I want the balloon to go higher up as well. So let's change the animation. 
And let's turn... Okay, let's skip all the way to frame 13. That's where I have the keyframe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this higher. All the way to 0.8. In fact, let's just all the go all the way to 1. Let's see what that will give us. Okay, re-simulate. Turn off the template. So this could be an easy way for you to use the posing and utilize other things to help you guide the IKs. The point snapping is just one of them. There's probably like a ton of things that you can do. I hope you like this demonstration of how you can use the IK controls in later basic concept videos. We'll throw some procedural animation onto the IKs and things will get even more awesome. In the next video, I'll show you how you can layer the full body IK notes and speed up the posing process. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.